Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how you can make new items look vintage and old. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Our first project is a flat pack crate that I picked up at a hardware store in Australia called Bunnings. And I'm sure that you can probably find these in a lot of different places. I had to put it together myself and that's always fun. So I've got the drill out and I'm just starting to add the screws to the pre-drilled holes. This was pretty straightforward. Um, a few times I did have to make a couple of pilot holes just to make the process a bit easier. But honestly, it was pretty straightforward. I think most people would be able to do this. If you don't have access to a flat pack crate, I'm sure you'd be able to go out and find something similar at a lot of stores and be able to turn it into something similar to what we're going to do today because the whole purpose of today is to give you ideas on how you can make new things look vintage and old. To begin this process, I'm going to be using my mister to mist the wood so that the stain that I'm about to use will be able to be distributed more evenly. Today I'm using one of my favorite products, Dixie Bell's Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. And you can see as I'm applying it, I'm also misting the stain as I go. This again is going to help with even coverage and it reduces the amount of stain that you have to use. It makes it go just that little bit further. I'm only going to be doing one coat of this over the entire crate because we are going to be layering some paint over the top. I just didn't want that new looking wood peeking out underneath my paint. I think it would defeat the purpose of making this look wet and vintage. This is obviously unsealed wood. So now I'm coming around with a small candle and I'm rubbing wax over the areas where I want there to be a bit of resist so that my paint doesn't stick as well. I'm then going to mix up some of Fusion's toasted coconut milk paint. I'm going to put one cap full in. This is about the equivalent of a tablespoon approximately. And then once I've done that, I then need to add the exact same amount of water. So another cap full of water to my milk paint mixture. And then I'm going to stir it really well. If you are worried about lumps and bumps and it being a little bit chunky, you could always use an immersion blender for this. I'm happy for it to be a little bit thicker. Now I am using a natural bristle brush to apply my milk paint. I just find that it distributes it a little bit better and I'm going to apply it to the entire crate. Once my first coat is dry, I am going to come in with a second coat and I will of course add a couple of coats to the bottom of the box as well. Now I'm going to be using a 220 grit sandpaper and also an 80 grit sandpaper to sand back certain areas. This is where that rustic vintage look is going to come in. I am paying attention to the areas where I know that we put that wax in the beginning because this milk paint has really been sucked into that raw wood. So it is a little bit trickier to get the paint away. I'm using the 80 grit first and then I'm coming in with the 220 grit to smooth out out any of the really rough edges and to just make it a little bit more of an even distressing. I'm going to work my way around the box, repeating the same process and distressing wherever I feel like that natural wear would occur. If this look isn't rustic enough for you, maybe it's a bit too subtle, you could use some sort of a crackle medium or some sort of PVA glue underneath your paint instead. I went a little bit more subtle this time, but you can always take it to another level by providing more of a resist underneath your paint, whatever paint you're using. Finally, now I am going around the top edges of the crate and of course distressing the inside of the crate as well. Next, I'm going to be using JRV mini advertising label stencils and I've picked the cotton design and I'm just going to use a couple of elements from that, not the entire design. I like the section that says number 10 cotton there. So I'm using some of Dixie Bell's silk umber mineral paint. I have a small artist brush and I'm going to just get it into place and then start dabbing and stippling 
the paint on. I have very little paint on my brush. I always offload a lot. This reduces the risk of the paint bleeding underneath the stencil. I'm just holding my stencil in place for this part, but if you're worried about it shifting, you could use some sort of painter's tape to hold it in place or perhaps some sort of a spray adhesive on the back of your stencil. It really is up to you. Now I'm using another section of the stencil down the bottom and I'm going to just repeat the same process, dabbing off the majority of my paint and then swirling and dabbing my paint on. If you don't have access to a stencil, you could use stamps or you could perhaps hand paint in whatever design you have in mind or maybe even use a transfer. Once my stenciling is complete and dry, I'm going to distress it back using some 220 grit sandpaper and then I'm going to seal the entire crate with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in clear and I will buff off the excess. And here's our finished crate. I think this definitely has more of a vintage weathered feel now. Let me know in the comments what you think of this project. Our second project is this watering can that I picked up at Ikea. To prep this piece, I gave it a coat of Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer and now I'm going to mix up some of my favourite paint, the Toasted Coconut Milk Paint by Fusion. I'm mixing one tablespoon to one tablespoon of water. I'm mixing it up with a little whisk this time and then I'm going to give this watering can one coat of the milk paint before we move on to the next step. The Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Sealer is going to give this a little bit of tooth, something for that paint to stick to because because even though we are going for a bit more of a chippy weathered look here, I don't want all of that paint to flake off. I need to know that majority of it is going to stay and stick there. I also made this mixture a little bit thicker by adding just a tiny bit less water to the mixture. I just feel like that also helped with the paint sticking to this slick surface. I'm not going to paint the inside today, just the outside. I'm going to let this first coat dry completely naturally before I move on to the next step. So you can see here that I've already got a little bit of crackling happening in certain areas. Some of it has already flaked off just as I've been handling it. So it is looking good. It's not all coming off. As you can see, I can scratch the side there and it's not coming off, but we are starting to get a little bit of crackle, some signs of age. So we're headed in a good direction. So next I'm going to make Mix up my milk paint again just to get it all mixed thoroughly in so that none of it's sort of settled to the bottom and then I'm going to go in and do another full coat. On the areas where the paint flaked off I did use a little bit more of a dabbing motion. I didn't want to disturb too much more of that paint and I'm just going to work my way around until I've got full coverage. For this project, I really wanted that metal peeking underneath, but you could always layer some colors underneath your last coat of paint for a bit of a different aged effect. I just decided that I wanted that metal showing through. This is really something that you can customize and sort of experiment with. It's just up to whatever look you're trying to recreate. Now comes one of my favorite parts. I am not letting this dry naturally. I am using a heat gun to speed up the process. I am still moving my heat gun around quite a lot, but then I do focus on certain areas and I'm loving the crackle that starts to appear as I'm working around. It didn't flake off a lot, which is good. We just wanted it in certain areas, but you'll see that some of the crackle is starting to form. And just because you see crackle doesn't mean that it's all going to flake off. It does just give you that really fun texture. So once my second coat is completely dry, you can see here the wonderful crackle that I've managed to achieve. It is looking so good. I love this look. I've got bits that are going to flake off. I've got some that aren't. This has just turned out really, really well. 
Next, I'm going to work my way around the watering can, just using my finger to see what paint I can disturb and help to flake off for that natural chippy look, especially around the water spout. I've noticed there is a bit of paint that's able to come off. So again, just working my way around and loosening any of the paint that's ready to go. I also found that using my IOD silicon blade really helped loosen some of that paint. I was able to pull off some more of the chippy paint there. You can see we've got a few nice big chips happening there. And then when I wasn't able to get uh, any more of that paint to chip off, I did decide to come in with some sandpaper. I am only using a 220 grit sandpaper. I don't wanna be too rough with it. So I'm going around the areas that would naturally age, like around the rim and the spout and the handle and I'm just doing a little bit more distressing. If you've been watching me for a while, you know I do love to use Dixie Belle's patina paint. It gives a lovely rustic look. I'm coming in with the iron patina paint. I've just got a small artist brush that I'm applying that to the watering can. I'm focusing on areas where I think that that rust would naturally occur. So around the bottom of the watering can, anywhere that I think that that water would sort of fall and accumulate and cause rust. So I'm just adding that. Now, ordinarily you would be doing one coat of this, letting it dry and then coming in with a second coat of this before using the green activation spray. I just wanted to see how it would go with just one coat. And also I didn't mind if some of that iron patina paint color stayed. I just felt like it actually really went beautifully with the look that I was trying to achieve. If you don't have access to patina paint, maybe before you start painting with the milk paint, you could actually age your watering can in some vinegar. Maybe you could use paints or waxes to replicate the look. You don't have to use the exact products that I'm using today. While my patina paint is still wet, I'm using the green activation spray. I've poured a little bit in a container. I have a brand new brush and I am going to go around and dab that green activation product onto all of my wet paint. This is going to help start the rust process. The rust process can actually take several hours. So you just wanna be a bit patient with this process. I've called it the green activation spray because it actually does come with a nozzle and a lot of people do actually spray that product as opposed to dabbing it on with a brush, but I like to have more control and I don't want my whole watering can sprayed with that product. I want to be able to apply it to certain areas. So again, that would just be your personal preference and whatever look you're trying to achieve. I also decided to add a little bit of the leftover spray product to certain areas just to see how it would react to the metal that's already in the watering can. If you're worried about it actually rusting through and you really want to use this as a watering can, you can use Dixie Bell's Prime Start first. That is a priming product that stops that rust going any further than the surface area. Again, this is a decor item. I don't mind if this literally does get rusty and crusty. Once the patina has started to work its magic, I am coming in with some more of that milk paint. I just wanna tidy up some of those areas. This is something I like to do. I like to layer my original paint back over the top. I like to stipple it and dab it. I think it just adds to the realism and it also allows it to have more of a natural look instead of it looking like it's just got spots all over it. So again, this is just something that I like to do. And you can see I do actually cover up quite a lot of the product. I want it to be a very subtle look here. But again, it really is up to you and what look you're trying to achieve. So I can see that not all of the iron paint actually activated and that's why they do say to do two coats. So if you really want it to be really rusty, you would make sure that you do those two coats. I'm not minding that dark of the iron patina paint underneath. I think it actually looks a little bit like maybe it was painted black at one point. So it's just all about building up those layers when you're trying to make something look vintage and weathered. I then came in with my heat gun again, just to make sure that we were getting a little bit more of that crackle, just to help the extra layer of paint blend in with the look that we'd already achieved. 
Now I'm going to be using one of the designs from JRV's mini grain sack stencils. I'm using this design here. It has a lot of text, which I love, and I'm using very little paint. I have got that umber silk mineral paint again. I'm dabbing off a lot of that excess. This was a little bit tricky. I probably would recommend that you use some sort of spray adhesive. Um, I really had to hold it down a lot because of the circle that was cut out around the edge but I'm going for a vintage look here, so I didn't think it was too bad if I did actually not get it perfect. Once that paint's dry, I'm coming in with some 220 grit sandpaper to distress the stencil design itself and then sealing the entire jug with some clear Bestang wax. Okay, you guys know I could not stop there. I had to grab some of my brown Bestang wax and I am adding it over the top of the jug. And I love how that product has sat down in the cracks that were formed by the milk paint. I think it just adds so much weathering and I just love this look. So I'm going to apply the brown wax to the entire watering can. And obviously if it gets a little bit too dark in certain areas, I'm able to use that clear wax, almost like an eraser, and I'm able to lighten the look right up. If you don't have this wax to use, you could always use a glaze or a paint wash, or if this is a little bit too much for you, you could leave this step out. And here's our finished watering can. I love how this turned out. I could definitely imagine this with some lovely flowers sitting inside. I think it now looks wonderfully aged and chippy and vintage. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our final project is this bucket that I picked up from TK Maxx on sale last year. I've primed it with Rust-Oleum's Clear Matte Sealer and now I'm using Fusion's Sea Glass Milk Paint. I'm going to use about a tablespoon of the mixture and obviously then add a tablespoon of water and then give it a good stir. I'm very excited to be trying this color. I have not used this color before. Now I'm using a natural bristle brush to apply my first coat. I just wanna get a nice even coat on here. This is going to be our base. So we're going to get a coat of that on the outside. We're letting that dry naturally. And I am now mixing up some more of my favorite paint, the Toasted Coconut by Fusion. I'm mixing up some more of that. And we're going to be using that color on the inside of the bucket. So I think that this is actually probably used as an ice bucket, but I can also see it as a sort of French flower bucket. So that is definitely my inspiration for today's project. It's going to take three coats to get the coverage that I want on the inside of the bucket. And I'm also coming in with a bit more of that sea glass to paint the handles. Now I'm applying my second coat of the sea glass paint and I am going to actually be speeding up the process of the drying on this one. Remember, this is the layer that we actually want to have that crackle and have that distress. I'm focusing the heat gun on the areas where I think a lot of the wear would occur, obviously around the edges. And then I'm coming in with some 220 grit sandpaper just to remove a little bit more of the excess paint and to get a bit of a smoother surface. I'm then coming in with a paint scraper just to remove a little bit more paint around the edges. And again, just where I think that that wear would occur. Next, I'm going to add an element from IOD's Traditional Pots Transfer. I thought that this design went perfectly with the vintage French feel that I was going for. So I've just wiped off to make sure that there's no dust. Then I have stuck the transfer down and now I'm using the transfer tool to rub my design down, lifting the plastic as I go. I'm then using the carrier sheet to further rub and burnish the design to make sure it's all stuck down well. I'm then using Dixie Belle's Bestang Waxing Clear to seal my transfer and the entire bucket. Mm -hmm. 
I like to use circular motions and really work my wax into my paint. I just find that this gives me more even coverage and it definitely buffs back nicely. After sealing the interior of the bucket, I'm adding some of Dixie Belle's brown bestang wax to give this more of an antiqued feel. I'm going to add this to the entire bucket. And if I feel I've gone a bit too dark in certain areas, then I can always use the clear wax like an eraser and remove the excess. And here's our finished French country bucket. I'm really happy with how this turned out. It was a plain bucket before, now it feels like a beautiful vintage French country piece. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's projects and that it's inspired you to look at some of your new decor in a different way. You can make it look vintage, weathered and aged with paint products, waxes, really lots of opportunities to take something that's a bit generic and make it unique. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment, and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you're not already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.